where he's got a bit of magic from the shrapnel and assassinate, but also offers some physical to go with the ogre. So a bit of a, a funky opening from Secret. Team Secret, despite the uh, the Lich pickup, are still going to ban away some of the combo heroes with Ogre. Might as well, right? So Sniper is going to be banned away. I thought that would have been the second pick for Cloud9, but they choose to keep a very uh, open 1-2 pick in both their supports, Ogre. Rubik, um, what other heroes would you like to see banned with that Ogre Magi? Ah, the Shadow Fiend, perhaps? I think he's that other kind of hybrid where he's like physical damage and also has a decent amount of nuke damage. And he's typically been the Team preferred Secrets option for Baby Knight. They've been back. doing Ogre S. They had Ogre SF as their first two pick in a couple of their games. So more so than playing Sniper, they are playing the SF. So if you're not banning it, you've got to be expecting that hero to get picked up if you're secret. Perhaps they think they can deal with it better than the Sniper, which would be an obvious reason to leave it in the pool. But uh, that, that's kind of what I'd think and imagine Cloud9 go to, even more so because it's a game. Right. Reserve time. Yeah, I, I was thinking the SF. Well, in which case, uh, who knows? Maybe Cloud9 won't focus on the Bloodlust at all, and they'll just the fact that they've got a nice tanky support and do something very different with their draft. Another hero that was that was kind of missing for me um, in the last two picks, I think, against the Dimensional Spirit. Eventual Spirit was uh, one of those heroes like Weaver, who is also missing from the current pool, as well as Lordar. Those three have a uh, very, sim uh, very striking similarity when it comes remaining. to drafting, which is uh, teams have preferred to grab those heroes early on because they're physical damage and minus armor, Team and Secret they're also versatile pick. picks in that they can run both support as well as core, or in Weaver's case, safe lane or, uh, support Team or off lane. Oh. Secret go back for the Luna. This has been the probably most game well has won both the game so far and been one of the most influential picks of the drafts we've seen as far as just giving you that strong laning hero good mid game pushing hero and good late Ten game carry remaining. it gets to late game i don't feel like the late game potential of luna was needed in that game Five too but game one we remaining. definitely saw that from cloud nine so i think the big weakness right now in secret draft for me is that time. lich support not that this is a bad pick but more it's something you can try and take advantage of lich is typically not a good safe lane support you don't have any good stuns you're not very tanky if you have a lineup that can dive towers or really put pressure on that off lane for Cloud9, I think that's something you can take advantage of. Like a Lich Luna lane is not particularly strong. Typically, teams are running Lich as a dual lane support in the off lane or even around the mid lane just for some extra denies. So that off lane for Cloud9 is where I would look for them to try and really apply pressure and put Secret off guard. Do you think that... Um... But part of the problem I see with that is that they have Ogre Rubik. Um, neither one is a particularly mm. strong dual aggro. So do you think they're, it's possible they can run an aggro tri-lane here into Luna? It's possible. Like, I'm trying to think, what would the right core would that be? Like a Rubik, Ogre... I mean, Luna would be the dream one. Um, otherwise, hmm. There's some other I mean, heroes, ideally... Throw Ranger, Ursa... Uh... Yes. Remaining. I mean, there's even Marana. certain offlaners. <laughs> Rubik Morana, but that seems a bit weird. Remaining. Try lane carry Morana, but let me think the draw idea that you mentioned could be more likely. I like this pick from Secret. Your your lanes are a bit weak, and that top lane could be contested. They get a a full position that could theoretically just secure the safe lane if they need it to. So you can just send them dying up there to spam decay against either an aggressive dual lane or an aggressive tri lane. Uh, this gives them much stronger lanes. Ten seconds remaining. Dying, uh, much like Lich, did get some later game buffs with the Five talent changes. Remaining. 15, 20, 25 talents all got some buffs, but again, not something Reserve time. really want to focus on. Uh, Cloud9, they have this nice aggressive puck, could still be an offlaner, um, but Ranger. likely they're mid. They are going to go with the Draw Ranger, Team which Secrets does uh, still keep open that offlane puck. It does also make uh, an aggro trine lane possible. They still want to go into Luna Undying. Uh, a little bit unadvisable, but maybe they can make it work. Um, and they could give Puck, uh, as a result, a 1v1 safe lane Ten with a Draw Ranger remaining. aura. Uh, that could be decent, but it also versus a centaur. Five seconds remaining. I think it's, it works if they're full on tri lane up there because you can position the Rubik and Drow such that Reserve ideally time. Undying is not getting two, three man decays off. Uh, and you can kite him around. If Undying ever oversteps, you lift him up, you pull him in, Ogre's there to fire blast, and you've got yourself a kill. So I think the tri lane works against Undying Luna. And even if it's Undying Luna Lich altogether, I think it can still work. 
but you want to find favorable matchups elsewhere. Uh, the puck center you mentioned isn't necessarily that puck favored. Both heroes should farm, should get their fast level six, and then we see what happens when they rotate to the tri lane. Uh, and then we don't quite know just yet what that mid lane matchup is going to be. But Secret, by choosing second pick, they get to react. They get to put mid one in a position where he can counter pick once again. That was the big thing last game. He sees the Zeus, he plays TA. That wins Secret the game on draft. And he can counter pick Cloud9 once again. So if you're Cloud9, you've got to be thinking let's just pick a stable, consistent mid laner that doesn't get countered badly, whether that's like an OD type hero, the Baby Knight Viper is even being picked up here and there. Get some drought partner that doesn't lose, it, lose its lane. You know what's kind of lacking for Cloud9 as well is, um, is a pipe hero. There's a lot of magic damage on Team Secret. You know, the physical damage mm -hmm. doesn't come in much later uh, with the Luna, so it, it is a bit unfortunate. It's the only reason that I'm thinking about the, the Puck mid and getting a different, different offlaner. Uh, yeah. is solely because of the fact that I want, want to be able to see a pipe, though a different mid laner could also give them a better, like more mid to late game oriented strategy. Right now, they're very heavily in all in aggression, five manning, early game, like end this game by, you know, 30 minutes. Or... Yeah, they could easily consider puck mid and putting Radiant some safe lane hero that matches up well against the centaur in a, in a 1v1 type matchup. Uh, Darkseer perhaps comes to mind if you want like a mech and pipe hero. Um, has received some nerfs, and I think that nerf will actually hurt him more in a 1v1 than it does in like the 1v2, 1v3s in the offlane, since you'll run out of mana in a lane you're looking to actually contest and play in. So Starksy becomes less appealing because of that, but OD banned out, so Secret seem to think it's going to be like a Hesajo puck. They oh, ban the TA, Medusa. pick Medusa. Well, that uh, that wow. kind of solves their, their mid to late game problems, and it also helps deal with, um, I think, some of the sustain issues that they're having. Because this is looking like Secret, if they get the right kind of initiation, which is blow up Cloud9. A little bit Ten hard to get that initiation, remaining. but if it's possible, uh, they'll, they'll just destroy Cloud9, Four run them over, and remaining. quickly gain an advantage from there. But Dusa is a very hard hero to initiate into, thanks to... Reserve time. Yeah, and now you've got good counter-initiation spells, not just like a, a Gust, but you've got a Stone Gaze, Puck, and counter-initiate well, you've got Telekinesis from Rubik, so you, it's very hard Ten to jump seconds, that really? frontline Medusa, or even if it's Drown the frontline seeing the tower, uh, hard to do so Ten as well, because that seconds. Medusa, Stone Gaze, or the Puck can kind of come in and turn it around. So, Secret, get an explosive mid one here in response, but not exactly an amazing lane for a PA against that Medusa at mid. It's definitely manageable to get some farm. I feel like this is more just like a counter to the Drow more so than the Medusa, and something they see that can scale well into that mid game, uh, even the late game against a Medusa hero that doesn't want to go into MKB. Yeah, this is very much looking like I, I think there's two ways to deal with the Medusa strategy. You either counter pick the Medusa and pick up a mana burn hero, diffuse the blade hero, something like that, or you go the other route and you just ignore the Medusa entirely and focus on the rest of the team. And it's like uh, secret to go for that latter strategy. Okay. Jumping on the draw ranger, the, all this team fight potentially with the centaur on dying. You've got some nice tankiness to survive through the nukes of the remaining. the puck and Rubik, and then you know, try and eliminate those those squishier Five damage dealers. And the Medusa's left for last. Yep, I'm slightly liking C9 drop. But they can definitely try and get like an item advantage. If they can get up to like their their dragon lances or whatever it may be on their cores, uh, get the just a decent blink timing on Puck. I feel like C9 will have the option to just start barreling down towers, uh, and the PA's timings could come a bit late. But similarly, Secret could have a strong laning stage and upset some of those timings. Yeah, it looks like they're not going to be going for the aggro tri lane to start out with C9. They're just going to have an off lane Puck. They are smoked up and rotating out but the vision's already been placed by secret they've got a nice aggressive mid ward i don't think either one um maybe maybe pile i die was spotted i'm not sure not sure yeah i didn't didn't see where, whether they, any of those got scouted but yeah no it doesn't look like we'll see any early game engagements or fights um We'll see where Puppy looks to head. He is for now, staying around this top lane, perhaps worried about some of those aggressive lanes coming out. And uh, I think that's something where his first job is to make sure if there is an aggressive tri lane, he's up there to secure Luna some early farm. And once he sees it's not an aggressive tri lane, he may zone and harass the Puck a bit, but he can then look to move off the lane, perhaps help the PA at mid. 
Banner Ward is going to be rather destructive. Against the Lich, you always want to be able to have your poles accessible. And uh, Cloud9's easy camp pole is blocked out by the early sentry. I Die does deny just the, uh, the range creep to start off bottom lane and starts heading toward mid. His presence, if he could get a faster level 2, his presence would definitely welcome again. I do say, as you said, it's not going to be a fun matchup, right? A melee hero versus uh, Medusa's Mystic Snake. Yeah, level one blink strike from mid one just goes straight onto Baby Knight for some cheap harass. And it does look like we'll see a almost full on dual lane mid. Pilot A not leeching too much XP for now. It's just falling back, blocking the wave. We'll probably spam that sacrifice on range speed. But top lane is where the brawling's going. Noia is up here helping out Hester Joe in a 2v2 type lane. Kind of interesting. The Undying Decay is going to be tough to work around with uh, the nuke of the Lucent Beam later on into the lane, but it does seem like early on the Ignite is doing its work. Rubik is going to stick around in the bottom lane. It feels like Baby Knight can handle himself in this 1v2. It's now a level 2 lit, so they will start spamming him down, Pile I Die. And continue to deny as much as possible, throw that Frost Blast wherever possible, so won't be a fun lane for Baby Knight, but like you say, he can still handle himself in this 1v2. May have to bring out some extra regen rather than go straight to the bottle. Uh, doesn't have a salve or anything, goes for the magic stick instead. Which is going to help a little bit, but I, I feel like he's going to need a salve or at least go for an early shrine. Yeah, this really sucks because uh, Baby Knight can't rely on Mana Shield against this much aggression because he really wants to keep Mystic Snake up. So if he uses Mana Shield too much, he drops too low, can't use that Mystic Snake anymore, and all of a sudden the, the PA feels a lot more comfortable with how this landing phase is going to go. Won't feel that reoccurring, you know, nuke that just saps your mana and refreshes Baby Knight. So I like their, the idea of Gresham. I'm not sure how long they keep to it, but it seems like Pilot Eye for now, especially with the Arcane yeah. Rune, is going to keep I don't think he can really help out top lane too much. He could perhaps deny some range creeps at bottom, but bottom lane is being played around uh, the side pulls anyway, so realistically, going for sacrifices there to pull the lane back can be countered by the pulls. Mid lane, there's no real counter to this. Baby Knight is just stuck. He can't really push past the river. The Arcane Rune is an amazing rune to get this early on in the Lich with the cooldown and the mana cost on your Frost Blast, but more importantly, the, the cooldown of sacrifice getting reduced as well. This is the dream rune for Pile I Die to find. Mr. Joe is actually doing very well for himself. The Ogre Magi uh, definitely created a lot of space for him, but we also uh, need to talk about the fact that this is an offlane Puck with Draw Ranger Aura. This yeah. is an old school strategy. Um, Puck was picked up as an offlaner uh, way back when, and with the Draw Ranger, uh, she used to be like kind of an unstoppable offlaner. Here we're seeing some reoccurrence to the older Dota 1 days. Yeah, Puppy less so securing the lane is more just acting as a defensive. Uh, presence for MP. They'll all been do a bit of damage, but it doesn't look like they'll get any kills off this one. There's an early Blightstone. I love this pickup. Puppy's actually maybe going down. He thinks it is Blightstone. One more right click. Wow. That Blightstone pickup with Noya coming in with the Ignite. Holy cow, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, Noya's just able to man up, beat down Puppy with Club. Ignores the tier one tower entirely. Uh, a well-structured strategy here, here from comes C9. Pi. Highlight Eye has to come up to the top lane now. It should be Hester fine. Hester Joe. The jungle. Got all. They can only really go annoy it because Hester Joe theoretically should just be able to orb out of this one. And then they got the shrine as well. They're actually going to turn to oh fight Oh god, Joe. he's so close to death. If they get the Lucent Beam, he needs a little bit closer, but won't get it. He gets a uh, full magic wand heal off. I think this is where they shrine up. No mana on the Ogre. You shrine up, you go back to lane. Ogre doesn't seem too interested in it though. Maybe uh, actually just be walking dead. back. Oh, they use the shrine. Okay, that makes that makes more sense then. Um, so yeah, they they won't be able to do too much to contest these lanes as it's uh, uh, much further until the Ogre comes back. Mana. By the way, Rise, protect your bounty runes. Your support right. Have that bounty rune. Oh, Hesajo doesn't orb to the river though. Taking a bit of damage from the Puppy Pilot Eye duo. That will get him back down low. Cheap harass from Secret means he may have to back up this lane or get like a salve brought to him, but it looks like he's going to orb his way home. Wanting to be. Ideally, you want to stay full HP mana for this top lane as soon as possible. So you can. If you're low HP or low mana, you're not able to contest that lane. Ace is level 6 now, though. Marksmanship is a big boost in the Drow aura the whole team, so this top lane gets even scarier now with the Puck Ogre duo. 
Yeah, Lich shows up and denies one of those creeps in mid, but I'm really feeling like this is not a lane that they can duel anymore. Uh, just because the higher levels of Misty Snake are uh, particularly yep. threatening, as well as that extra draw ranger damage. And the bottle's out there, so Baby Knight has sustain. You spam him, he bottles up. Or the crow if he needs to, or he can just tuck himself into the jungle, pick up a bounty rune uh, in the meantime as well. So it does feel like his presence is not going to offer quite as much as it used to. And he's going to swing bottom off a help to Kezu. Healy needs to try and find this Radiant Observer Ward, but he probably doesn't know exactly whether it's in the lane or on that cliff. So but now, I Lai Dai will be well known in his presence at this bottom lane. Dive it in for MP way past the tower. They will manage to pick up that kill. And a 1v2, Puppy actually shouldn't be feeling too confident. Even if he is tanky, you can see that Minus Armor is just ripping him to shreds to get the orb out. Now it's another 1v2. Pilot Eye could be slowed down by the Ignite. He starts making his way to the tower. Has to Joe. Is he going to pursue? He's got an orb in three more seconds. The Luna's TPing in, though. They think better of it. Looks like Noya may have just been caught mid one. He's actually the TP, not the Luna. So he will punish bit of overaggression there from C9. They still collect two for one, though. And Pilot Eye was a kill without those TPs in, but Hesinger, I think, knowing that, had to let his Oki go down. MP, just defensive oh, no. from Centaur, will get him away. Ace wasn't quick enough with the uh, the Gust. Oh. He hits him just after the Kezu lands, and of course Kezu's just sitting there spamming the R button, trying to get it off as quick as yep. possible, so... It might have been still feels good like they can get this bottom T1 tower. Like, I think... All in all, C9 in a very good spot. This top lane aggression has dominated the lane. Ace at bottom, while they don't get that kill, they put themselves in a sp spot to get this team on tower, knowing that there's no stampede to engage in them, and they've got the high ground ward. They're actually going to go in now on Kezu. Kezu stunned up. Telekinesis still ready to go. There is no ultimate out from Kezu, so unless there was mass TPs, he's definitely dead, but maybe they can get the counter kill. Mid one has come in, hits the crit, managed to finish off Ace, and will collect Noya's bounty as well, I believe. It's not have a TP out. Nice double there for Midwan. Midwan again, uh, much like the the, the Klaswex Invoker that we saw from him, where he was rotating around the map uh, all the time in an earlier series. Uh, Midwan's doing something very similar here with his mid PA, trying to bolster the side lanes as they were getting run over. Yeah, it was like a common theme in these games where there's one team who's very clearly the aggressors trying to take early towers, put pressure on, and the other team has to react uh, to those tower dives. This game around Secret have done a very good job at least punishing through mid one's PA, 2-0 and 1, but it's going to only get harder as C9 pick up their first couple of like just stat items, get like a Dragon Lance on Drow, get her a bit tankier, even just getting a few more levels in things like the Gust, the Frost Arrows, as well as the Aura. Those kind of rotations not quite as effective, but for now, mid one being very influential on this early game. The Stampede. Uh, from Kezu this time to save Puppy's life, mid one. Perhaps to jump in, but thinks better of it. Not against uh, four heroes. You can see just from the net worth, a bit of the storyline of this early game for Secret and Cloud9. Game three, in most part, Cloud9 taking advantage of the lanes, getting all their cores, a good amount of farm. Even the off lane has been going well, but mid one has been small saving grace for secret he's been moving around and he's actually sitting all 700 gold above the medusa is currently sitting at second yeah those kills have really boosted him up ace of this one needs to be a bit careful with all the heroes down here no stampede makes it a little bit trickier but mid one still thinking he can go for this dive see what rise can do to counterplay it as well as potential tps from players like hester joe's puck this is where you could be very careful about diving for these early kills rotation could completely Cause it to backfire. Yeah, it's, it's very questionable whether or not they could quickly kill Ace, right? Because they've oh, got this Luna down there. and Chain Frost. With the Luna, they could definitely dive the tower, but Hestio's going to be very comfortable TPing into this one. He's already taken the yes. tier one tower. They know there's nobody top. They know there has to be a rotation coming bottom. Out nine have prepped for this. They have to wait for the Stampede, probably. Mid one's going to go running in. There's the response. Double, triple TP. Nice double silence as well. Managed to hit the Luna in the back lines. Now Mid one's going to be controlled up, and the Chain Frost is going to be able to bounce over to Rise. They got a crit. Now Ace underneath the Eclipse gets taken out. MP surviving just a little bit longer, but Hester Joe does manage to get the kill. Secret lose three there. They do get the Draw Ranger, barely. Definitely not wow. an exchange worth it for Secret. Secret had to have known that the rotations were going to come out from Cloud9, but they did not respect that. 
Yeah, the the eclipse damage got mostly tanked up just fine by I mean Pucket a raindrop, Medusa's TP in as well. It's a very tanky presence to have there. They didn't even have the stone gaze for that fight, but just having bodies meant you were gonna turn it around. While they couldn't save and protect Ace because of the I mean you only had level one gust, you don't really expect him to have more. They could turn and punish, including kills on the Luna. Again, it's mid one surviving though, so he comes out well on top. This desolate timing is gonna be incredibly fast but it's still cloud nine the fact they can hold that tower and trade uh, in a favorable way while they take towers elsewhere on the map is playing well into their draft they've taken the t1 top this t1 mid getting very low as well maybe nine be careful has the stone gaze going He's for the gonna tower stick around for the tower but stone gaze is going to wear out mid ones uh, okay then well, we've got a's to back him up as well as has to joke as going to be caught no stampede to be able to save him mid one jumps forward tries to force ace back but now he's caught inside the coil and the heavy nukes of has to joe will bring the squishy pa down has to joe has been so big this game he crushed his top lane he comes in to end the pa streak this pa was getting awfully and scarily close to a fast desolator but that kill not only slowing mid one down, keeping his teammate Ace alive, and then transitions into a tier two tower. Cloud9 starting to gather some steam. Their, their push train is continuing to take tower after tower, and there's nothing Secret can really do until they get this central blink at this stage. Yeah, the, we kind of talked about how the laning phase, it needed to go the way of Secret in order to stop some of these early pushes, but quite the opposite happened. They lost the early game pretty badly. Mid one tries to go on to Noya. No luck in the crit department, so a failed kill there. And Cloud9 have just been kind of steamrolling ever since. Good landing phase now turns into pushing towers. They've taken a tier two already. Fortunately for Secret, the change in shrines I think might slow down Cloud9's progression in farm a yes. bit. They won't have total control of the map, but it's still going to be a rough game as they are facing a Medusa. Yeah, that's the worry that late game is not necessarily looking all too good. PA be a pretty bad matchup against Medusa, even the like even with the evasion. Like I don't look at PA as like a hero that matches up well against Medusa late game. It's very hard to fight into her the stone gaze, and ultimately, if Medusa has to go in MKB, she'll get it as like her maybe fourth or fifth item uh, in an ultra late game setting to counter that PA blur at a later point. So it will be very tough for for mid one to to take this too late. He wants to fight around this desolate timing, ideally with a central blink, and it does look like those two items will come at pretty similar times. Problem is, it's not us enough, because they're going to lose another tower up top, it looks like. Hester Joe's got a blink, so the blink initiation advantage does go Cloud9's way at this point. Cloud9 did use a smoke for this rotation. Not completely sure about the blink dagger timing. They keep it uh, pretty safe. Smoke behind no. Ace, just in case a secret do plan on contesting. And it does look like even without the blink dagger, they're making their way over. Just 200 gold is all that's left that blink but they don't want to wait they want to keep this tier 2 tower alive but it's dropping faster and faster if they want to go they need to go now PA is not here they pop the glyph the ice armor's on the tower they begin to poke at C9 building up those decay stacks the desolator's coming in now and it looks like just the presence of secret does manage to force cloud 9 back long enough for PA to get here at least for that one way Kezu is still in a, a good spot to try and engage from the side with a stampede. They have to use the stampede offensively. Often you want to save it for a like more defensive for they initiate to get out. There's the tombstone laid out. It's immediately going to get a focus down. He tries to save it. Here comes the stampede. The tombstone does end up getting dropped here. C9 Chain starts backing himself off. A stolen stampede from Rise gives them some distance. MP is going to be locked in by the coil, unable to finish off even support Rise. What a quick steal oh from gosh. the Rubik. Allows Cloud9 some distance away from the initiation of secret that looked dangerous for c9 but they played that so incredibly well with their positioning as you said the stampede steal huge for them and baby knight also gets the stone gaze off before the central stun even hits him that was a central stun coming from the trees in fog by a stampede center and he still got the stone gaze off before the stun chain frost didn't bounce as well like i don't even i feel like secret did that as best they could but c9 just out executed and outplayed that fight in a very impressive way should Secret be fighting like that without their big piece? Like, they, I, they tried to go for the dive yeah. at the bottom. It feels like in some ways Secret are trying to force things maybe a little bit too much. They have the blink. It's so much easier to fight back because you just blink stun. Even if you, you can engage on the Dusa, you just need to make sure. Because if you burst down the Dusa early on, like, not even in terms of killing her, but taking away her mana through the mana shield, she doesn't get stone gaze off. And without stone gaze, that fight is a lot easier for Secret. More likely than not, the Chain Frost would have started bouncing as well, should the Medusa have been locked down rather than getting the Stone Gaze off. So, 
very, very much I feel a case where if Sentor has a blink dagger there, his stampede doesn't get stolen, he can engage with the stun. Perhaps stone gaze doesn't go off, the fight goes very differently. But Secret just got, I guess, fed up of giving away free tower after free tower and wanted to try and stop C9. It did yeah, it take some very good team fight from C9 to win that fight, though. It does feel like if you're giving away these towers, you're just feeding the beast, right? And and even if you do wait for your timings, C9 may still be too strong because you let them have so much tower bounty uh, and so much control over the map. As a result, they've got the top three net worth in the game. Uh, PA is somewhat close to them at a, uh, a 6,300 fourth place, but oh. it's the Luna who is much farther behind at fifth place at only 4,500 gold. Look at this Ogre net worth too. Noya's at 4k. He's been in all those kills at top lane, so he's got an early medallion. It's soon to be Solar Crest. Solar Crest cheaper than it used to be in some past patches, and that's an item which will make PA's life very, very difficult in these fights. You can put on the Medusa, you can use it aggressively on PA. One. Silent Stampede, but a Dream Coil's there. She can't run out. Oh, that was actually was a stolen Stampede by Rise. Yeah. <laughs> Just using it to guarantee the kill since it was going to wear off soon, anyways. and. They just, this is all the outer towers if C9 won, but this is not the old patch where you can just use that to take those shrines. We'll have to see a, a high ground push should you want to take out the shrines if you see them as important objectives. I think C9 will likely just thinking, hey, how and when can we get a Rax at this point? Have we got the damage and items we need to push high ground with? Perhaps the Aegis is going to be enough for them. They do have some pretty good poking power. Um, if they can put the Medusa or Ace on the front lines, I'm not exactly yep. sure which one you do because Ace does have the Aegis, but Baby Knight's uh, clearly the tankier hero. Yeah, you can just Why not kind of poke cap? at the tower and see what happens. They have the Helm of the Dominator creep there, giving everyone Ice Armor as well, a great creep to have for this push, assuming they don't lose to the tower. But even so, they've already got the Ice Armor out, and Baby Knight is slowly taking this tower with Ace. An initiation from Kezu hits the stomp on a baby knight. Now gonna be oh, silenced silent. up. No opportunity for oh rise. He stole the hoof stomp too. What a great ability to pick up. He comboed that with the telekinesis. They're just gonna keep going. Focus down the tombstone. That would have slowed down their retreat, but they feel like with Kezu down, they can still go for these raxes. They are ice armored up. Whole secret can do is spam stifling dagger at this point. They want to slowly chip away at some of these heroes, but they've got urn on C9, so Ace backs off when he's low, gets earned up. He doesn't want to give his Aegis away for free, and this will be a free rax. MP pulled into the Telekinesis hoof stomp combination, finished off by the Mystic Snake. A coil in the back lines does pick up oh. the melee die as well, but C9 well focused on objectives, do manage to take out the melee rax, knowing it just got popped. A dagger crit as well as a maxed out soul rip hits him pretty hard. C9 now on the retreat. Secret need to be able to catch some things here, but honestly, C9 can turn and fight pretty damn well. The Stampede goes out, but it was kind of a worthless one. Nothing comes of it, and C9 will manage to retreat, only losing the Ogre, getting a full lane of racks, and now taking Shrines as well. The way, the timing of those pickoffs played out so well for them. You kill the Sentry, he has that buyback, so suddenly you take away the initiation, then right as the Sentinel's about to respawn, about three seconds before he does, they get the follow-up pickoff on Luna. So that means, okay, your initiator's respawned, perhaps you look to fight, but then you lose your teamfight spell, no more Eclipse, so... Both pickoffs meant so much there, because even though you're going to lose the Rex anyways, if Sentinel was able to respawn and you at least get some big kills on the retreat there of Cloud9, you can perhaps salvage the situation. But because the Luna goes down, they can't chase, they can't fight, and the advantage of C9 gets bigger and bigger. They've got a minute left with this Aegis, and they may actually go for this top lane of Rax. If they can get there, they're fast, which they'll be there probably with this creep wave in about 30 seconds' time. They'll have maybe one creep wave worth of Aegis. They want to force this. Lincoln Sphere on Medusa makes her very tanky, and they know that Secret right now a weak. Secret, desperate, or a strong initiation here. I've got a four-man smoke up behind NP, start making their way towards the second shrine. They think oh, Cloud9 the may try and go for that shrine, but Cloud9, they wise up to what Secret are up to. They managed to get a successful scan, expecting all of Secret here. Secret are still going to be able to get decent loop around with the last remnants of smoke. But I don't think it's going to catch uh, Cloud9 by too much surprise when the initiation comes. You can see already, Rise sitting up the far north. Hoof stomp going to be dodged there by Hedge and Joe. Turns around, managed to get a nice combination of three-man coil straight onto Secret. Secret are very rapidly losing all of their heroes. Here comes the buybacks, trying to save MP. MP being body blocked up by Hedge and Joe. Mid one does come in and executes the puck, but it's not going to be enough to save MP. He runs back to the safety of his base. Puppy is being poked at now by Ace. There goes that Aegis. Secret, this is their best opportunity 
community to be able to fight. They need to be able to pick up all of these kills. The Chain Frost, it doesn't keep on bouncing well enough. Noya gives up his life to try and go for the Tombstone and help the rest of C9 escape. Looks like Rise is going to be caught. He also turns around and just makes sure that his two cores will stay alive. Mass buybacks, but Secret do not get the big cores. They don't. I, I don't think C9, I think C9 just like joined the party. They're like, oh, you're buying back? We're going to buy back too. Puck didn't even have a TP. His TP was on cooldown, so he couldn't even get back to the fight. At this point, C9, the play is just a reset. Like, you, they just, was that five buybacks? It was at least four, and I, four, it looks yeah. like it was, yeah, it was, it was, what was it, all five? Even? Can't count. The fight recap says four. Oh, boy. Wow. All right. That's, well, there's, there's a, a dieback. Die there we go. 60 seconds. Let's go, Secret. It's time to pick up as many kills as you can with the numbers advantage. They're going to be able to find Noya. Ace thinks about turning around, but he doesn't have a gust, nor does he have the numbers to be able to fight Secret yeah. there. So. Yeah, I think Secret get a little overexcited. They they can sense victory. It's one of those scenarios where if this was a late game, buying back there makes sense. You boost the travel, you buy back, you TP into the fight, you win the game. But this is we're still in the early game, realistically. Like C9, don't get ahead of yourselves, guys. Like you you put yourself in a position to win this game. That was full buybacks. Everyone except the centaur of Kezu. They didn't need a buyback, but they're still in a very dominant position. They ideally look to play around the next Roshan, but Right now, they also they were just too kind of keen to play around those buyback cooldowns. But and you're, you're you're still in the early to mid game. You still want to progress item wise, perhaps grab another Aegis. But the respawns now, they'll be ready to rip the secret. Rise going forward in. by Rise catches MP with the telekinesis. There's the stampede. Noya couldn't get in range for the stun. The secret do manage to race away. Back to the base they go as they do have a bottom lane and top lane pushing. We'll see next smoke up. They want to go aggressive. I thought they might go for the shrine, but this looks like a more Aggressive play. They've got good high ground vision. They know if they get a big pick off here, the wave's even pushed out up top. Although it does look like it's played out. MP. Oh no. As the Joe makes his blink, the silence coil combination brings MP down to half with the Mystic Snake heavily hitting on and Ace to finish him off. Little damage now. It is the dieback for the Luna. 50 seconds left. Fortunately, for Secret, all the lanes are relatively pushed out, except for bottom. Yeah. So C9 won't be able to instantly go high ground. They'll just have to take the shrine and do that. Yeah, they could have tried to just fight through the, the tower without a creep wave thanks to the bottom lane, but I think this is a much safer play. Take the shrine, wait for the creep wave. 30 seconds on Luna is going to be a short enough respawn that she will be alive for the high ground defense. So it seems like C9 are back to maybe the more calculated play, which is map control and Roshan. Fight around those two big objectives. In that came rune, and it will be a pretty normal link grocery spawn a minute away. And we'll see what they can get out of this one. Silver Edge for Ace means this PA blur and evasion will be somewhat negated in this upcoming fight. Secret. I wonder if they have any smoke left. Do they have any in the inventory? Okay, they've got... Puppy does have a smoke. They've got Chain Frost, Tombstone, and Centaur's AoE hoof stop. Yeah. Maybe they can make a, a contest for, for Roshan if they smoke up at the right time. The problem is they have no idea when Rosh will be up. I was about to say, I feel like they should try to get a Helm of the Dominator creep and just camp it in the Rosh pit um, to try to find that timing out, but... Because they don't know the timing, they're just going to smoke now as soon as possible. Try and win a fight, and then, fingers crossed, if you win a fight, Roche has respawned, and you can take it. But C9 uh, positioned well behind the Medusa on the high ground. Drop down award. Uh, I mean, any vision at this point for this upcoming team fight is worth expending. Puppy. Yeah. I aren't moving forward, but they decide against it. They back up. They know Cloud9. They didn't make the read initially when the smoke happened. They sure as hell read it now okay. when creeps are pushing out of tier. And without a pick off, Roach has respawned at a time very favorable for C9. I feel like this is where C9 should look to invest in a gem. Just take out those wards outside secret space. It makes it damn near impossible to engage without them. And even just leaving your base in the farm becomes impossible. But strategically, it helped them a little bit. Or more likely than not, C9 though are just going to try and barrel down this top lane. They are strong enough now with the Aegis on Drow Ranger with the frontlining Medusa with Lincolns that they can come very close to just breaking through and probably thinking that these buybacks still on cooldown for two minutes could be something that they want to try and play around. Ace will finish up his Hurricane Pike here off the neutrals before this next push ensues. Kezu at least gets uh, Vanguard Crimson Guard all complete. So that will help his team tank up some. And Ogre's Flads. 
20 gold away, so they're not bringing the courier out just yet. That's a, another big team fight. Damage boost as well as armor boost against the physical damage of the PA, so it's a pretty decent upgrade into this upcoming team fight. The hard game pike helps a lot against the initiation, the the PA. Even if you can't, even if she's BKB, you can still just use it to force staff yourself out of there. So they will be waiting those big items. Courier coming in. Push should now progress. Baby Knight. Lincolns and half of the Scotty. Shorts and Signatory. He's going to be the big frontliner. Ace will sit a little bit farther back with his Aegis. Getting a lot of damage done on that tier 3. God, it melts fast, these buildings. Silence. Misses on Kezu. Mid one tries to jump forward and get a little damage done on Ace, but the melee racks. It's gonna fall the Baby Knight here. It's not just Ace that's the big physical damage either, but Baby Knight, he hits for 300 damage a shot now. Yeah. Lucia's downside often is that you need a couple of big items. Your items are always very defensive. You don't actually do much right click damage typically, but but Deuce is such a popular pick with the Drow Ranger, able to boost up her damage, almost double her damage output through the Drow Aura with the split shot. And Baby Knight has a Scotty for this. Final high ground attempt. I say final because if they get this lane of Rex, it is game over for Team Secret. There is not really any coming back from Mega Creeps, and C9 have run out of the window with the buybacks on cooldown. They know that when those buybacks come back up, because Puck at the same time. So Hester is probably saying, "Look, my buyback, buyback is back up. That means theirs are too." But ultimately, I feel like Secret just need to buy out whatever items they can get to try and defend with. They can't rely on buybacks for a defense like this. They got to go all out. Oh, nice hook stop. Well, not really. It's only just on Baby Knight, and that's a hero that can easily tank it up. Mid one goes ahead and pops his BKB, runs out of the coil. Kezu will sit there tanking Ace's shots. He'll be okay for some time. Mid one jumps back in with a BKB now. Stone Gaze was used. I think that means Cloud Nine are gonna wait to push, but we'll see. Yeah, even Baby Knight lost a big chunk of his mana pool. They've got two minutes on the Aegis, so they're not in a big rush right now, but they also don't have any major items coming their way anytime soon with Deuce having just picked up the Scotty, they just got the Vlads. They ideally want to try and end this game off of this Roshan, but they will find a regen rune. That's a nice pickup. Baby Knight will probably hold that one now that he's got a decent chunk of mana back and just chip at the tower, back off, pop a regen, and then go back in if he needs to. They also have to side lane pushes, super creeps coming in on both sides. Unfortunately, they did not expend anything too big there. Chain Frost being used, but that's not massive. Another stun out from Kezu on the Baby Knight. Baby Knight actually just turns. He's going to take down Kezu, it looks like, as he still silenced up, unable to get off the Stampede. And the rest of Secret, not able to do much here. Ace was pretty far forward, but he does have the Aegis, so Secret were not willing to commit to getting that kill. Another stun out on Ace, brought him down to half HP, but the Melorax has fallen fast. Now the initiation comes out from Hesa Joe, BKB activated, almost finished off Hesa Joe, but he managed to get the orb away, phase shift. There goes the stomp, they do actually manage to pick up Luna as well. Looks like C9, they've got everything they need to be able to finish off this one. Mid one gets pushed back, jumps right back on top of Ace, but can't even get the Aegis down. Secret will lose this game number three. They are out of DAC qualifiers. Cloud9. Move on. Yeah, I think most people pegged Secrets as the favorite coming into this series. Uh, I mean, they had success winning the Star Ladder qualifiers. Uh, they had a pretty good group stage outside of like maybe a 